Hi. Now, what we have then is, in this question, the curve C has the equation y equals 2x minus 8 root x plus 5, where x is greater than or equal to 0. And we're told that the tangent to the curve C at the point Q is parallel to the line with equation 2x minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. And we've got to find out the coordinates of the point Q. So if you'd like to uh, give this a go, just uh, pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So first of all, let's just get an idea about what we're going to do with this problem. Essentially, OK, we've got this curve C. And it doesn't really matter at this stage whether we know what the curve C looks like or not. I'm just going to draw just some squiggly line, OK? Just something like that. We'll pretend that this is the curve C. And we've got this line here. Again, it doesn't really matter what that line looks like at the moment, OK? I'm just going to draw a line something like this, OK? Now, we've got to find the point Q on our curve C, which is parallel to the tangent, that is, is parallel to this line. We're just looking at this sketch. It's going to be, say, that point there, maybe. OK, and if we just put that there, then you can see we'd have a tangent running through here that is parallel to that line. Now, what I'm going to be doing then is I'm going to look at the gradient of this line. OK, we can work out the gradient from here going to work out that gradient, then I know that it must be the same as the gradient of the tangent, because they're parallel. And the gradient of the tangent is given by dy by dx, okay, of the curve. And then I'm going to equate that gradient to the gradient we get with dy by dx, okay? And you should be able to find out the x-coordinate at this point here, which we're calling q, okay? So I hope you got that, OK, but uh, that's essentially where I'm going to go. We'll see how it unfolds in a moment. So that's my uh, thinking, OK, on this problem. This sketch here is not necessarily going to be accurate. Just giving me an idea, OK, of where I'm going. So I take my equation of my line, OK, first of all. Let's just put that down here. We've got 2x then minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. And to get the gradient for this, I'm going to rearrange it in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to add 3y to both sides. So I therefore get 2x plus 18 equals 3y, or just reverse it round, and I've got 3y equals 2x plus 18. And then if I divide both sides by 3, I end up with y equaling 2 thirds x, and 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6. So I can see that when I compare this to y equals mx plus c, m being the gradient, that gradient is going to be 2 thirds. So let's just put therefore the gradient okay, equals 2 thirds. A positive gradient. So that means that this line is sloping in the positive sense. OK, this gradient then has got to be the same as the gradient at this point Q on the curve. So we've got to find out the gradient in general on the curve C. In other words, get dy by dx for the curve C. So dy by dx okay, is going to equal, well, if we differentiate the first term, it's 2. This is minus 8x to the power half, and if we differentiate that in the usual way, you'll have minus 8 times a half, which is 4, reduce the power by 1, and you get x to the power minus a half, which can be written in a simpler form as 2 minus 4, and x to the minus half is 1 over x to the power half, or 1 over root x, so that's 4 over the square root of x. So. That means that we can now say, because the lines are parallel, the gradients must be the same at Q. Okay, so therefore, let's just say 
when dy by dx equals two thirds. When dy dx equals two thirds, what we therefore have is two minus four over root x, that's dy by dx in general, equals two thirds. And what I'm going to do here is add four over root x to both sides and take two thirds from both sides. So we've got two minus two thirds is equal to four over root x. And two minus two thirds is four thirds. So you've got four thirds equals four over root x. And you could divide both sides by four. So you get one third here and one over root x there. And with something like this, if you multiply both sides by three root x, you end up with root x equaling three. And if I go on to square both sides of the equation, we end up with x equaling nine. So when x equals nine, we now need to just go ahead and try and find out what the corresponding y coordinate will be for q. And we can get that by substituting that back into here. Okay? So when x equals 9, we can see that therefore y will equal 2 times 9 minus 8 times the square root of 9 plus 5. And working this out, what have we got? We've got 18 there. Square root of 9 is 3, so 8 threes are 24. So 18 minus 24 and then plus the 5. So this comes to minus 1. So in summary we're asked to find the coordinates of Q so therefore Q has coordinates an X coordinate of 9 and the corresponding Y coordinate turns out to be minus 1. So my sketch here wasn't correct okay certainly Q isn't at the point 9 minus 1 but did it matter? Not at all. It's just here to guide us through the problem. So I would certainly encourage you to draw sketches in questions like this just to get a feel for the problem. Okay, hope you've been able to follow that anyway. And that brings us now to the end of this particular part.